Hey everybody, welcome to another HBCU conversation here on HBCU Game Day. I got a guy on the line. I think you're going to enjoy hearing from him today. He's Perrin King. He's with Bruno Event Team, and he is the executive director of the Magic City Classic. But Perrin, it's more than a mouthful. You just can't say Magic City Classic. I'm going to I'm going to give you the runway, and the official name of the classic is. Awesome, awesome, awesome. First of all, Tali and, and all the fine folks at HBCU Game Day, thank you so much for having us and what you guys do each and every day uh, to be able to uplift the culture from from you know from an actual sports perspective, and then some of the some of the opinion pieces that you do uh, is extremely well done. But again, since we're taxing off the runway now, we're going to make sure that we nail the, nail the title correctly. So I am the executive director of the McDonald's Magic City Classic, presented by Coca-Cola. So again, very important, the first and last name with these huge global entities, and again, the magic is in the middle. Hey, that's right. Well, that corporate magic makes things happen, so you definitely it have does to, make you <laughs> got to get it right for sure. Uh, parents, so uh, look, since the last time I've seen you, man, the whole world is upside down. So I always love whenever we can get a chance to talk the business of HBCU sports. Has everything gone on with the pandemic forced your mind into thinking, oh, man, what if, what if, what if I need more contingency plans than I already have? Or, or are you the type of guy that you've already thought about eight million things that you need to worry about that hopefully would never happen? Well, I'm definitely not going to take credit for being smarter than what we are. God put so much into all of us, uh, but we are we are collectively forced uh, by nature, I guess would be the pun that we're going to put inside of there, to already think things through along these levels. And, you know, one of the things, Tyler, to be completely transparent with you is that we just know that this one is going to be so much bigger because, I mean, we're going to at some point, God willing, once we – we get through this fog and you know summer uh again whatever date that we kind of feel like there's an all clear uh throughout our, our universe uh, happens what's going to happen is that everybody's going to want to get out everybody's going to be so appreciative so grateful of what it is that they have and want to really get out and and see friends and family with a different fervor uh than i think we've had before so what that means for the mcdonald's Magic city classic um, and other fall events too is that this is probably going to be the biggest fall we have seen in in, in, our, in our recent times uh, because again you know we we kind of draw back into uh, post nine eleven and kind of looking at once we we kind of felt emboldened again to want to get back out uh, there was record attendance uh, through a lot of the the sports landscape uh, there was a lot of you know festivals that that kind of pushed back into that so. So we here on behalf of these two deserving HBCUs, Alabama and and Alabama State, we are bracing for for an amazing October 31st. Yes, Halloween also this year. So uh, this one's going to be nuts, and we we cannot wait for it. We we are so excited because again, we know how big this one's going to be because uh, all that cabin fever and and getting back out is all going to come to fruition October 31st in Birmingham, Alabama. Perrin, you know, I, I grew up in, in North Carolina and spent the majority of my adult life there until moving to Atlanta sure. a few years ago. And look, in North Carolina, we're basketball country. Like, like we like football. Like Great shooters. We'll, we'll, Great we'll, shooters. That's we'll, right. We'll show up <laughs> the day of the game, you know, maybe a little early. Right. We'll do a little cooking out. And game's over. We're going to go back home. Uh, the first year I went down to the Magic City Classic, as a reporter, you can start doing stories. There, there are pools of people there Tuesday, oh, yeah. Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, yes, well, yes. How, how does that happen? Like, how did that come to be? Well, you know, I tell you what's what's the amazing thing. I guess leading with saying and not burying the lead here, going back to your journalistic uh, roots, is that this amazing gathering is is on its seventy ninth year. So pausing on that point and knowing that there are some extremely unpopular times for this amazing event to occur in Birmingham, Alabama, the mecca center of the civil rights movement during that time. So to think that this went, it was an unbroken chain for that amount of time. Um, so some of those parts of how that began kind of predates me. Uh, but on, on, on our collective watch with our team and just kind of watching that Tuesday, 
just like, my goodness, have, have you guys seen it? We're out here trying to put bills together and, and get everything ready at a historic Legion field. And there's already 30,000 folks out there on a Tuesday. You're like, my goodness. And then all you do is just see that ramp up until, you know, we turn into a Saturday and it's 120,000 folks that are out there, uh, you know, within that <clears throat> three, three square mile radius as kind of totally trying to block off our perimeter. It's the most fantastic thing to see. Uh, and that really goes back to uh, the fine folks at Legion Field making it such a welcoming area. Um, the loyalists from Alabama State, Alabama A&M, all the alumni coming back in. The city, uh, the strong partnership with our millennial mayor, the Honorable uh, Randall Woodson, some of the things that we do with our great city council, they make it so inviting. And even the schools are out on Friday. Um, so you just think about this. It, it's it's pool stories that can be gathered. I mean, and, and a lot of the, the local media that's here, they do actually start running their stories, catching folks on Tuesday uh, to be able to start getting, you know, everything from, from soft pieces to, to, you know, the best grilling recipes to kind of understand family connections. How many generations deep are you? Uh, a part of this McDonald's message class by Coca-Cola. Uh, but yeah, no, you, you nailed it. And it's a different feel. You get a feel of, of, of being home. There's a peacefulness um, that becomes over that entire air of all of this really good wheel. And now with, you know, technology booming and some of these other things, uh, we just go back to a simpler time during the class to so make sure that everything just, just, just feels that way. So, we're kind of indebted to have to serve it to that purpose. But to your point, starting on Tuesday, having to wrap it all the way up through close of Saturday night at the post-game concert. You know, the, the one thing that, that I really take away from it, like when you're there, when you're at the press conference, the whole week, everything is so large. And I'm always like, yeah. man, we need to take some of this magic, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> And like, how do we spread it out to the rest of the season? Because the the recipe is there. The interest is there. The the energy is there. I'm like, you know, these kids deserve that, man. I mean, I know every weekend can't be the Magic City Classic, but it's like, man, if we could just take some of this energy and and spread it out for for every weekend, man, that I mean, that's kind of like the goal, the dream. No, I agree. Totally agreed. And, you know, you, when you say that and you bring up some, some, some very interesting points and just kind of leave like some solutions that need to be uh, kind of plugged into place there. You know, we're just thinking about just some of the diligence that we do year round. I look at like at Alabama State, uh, we ended up being top five in attendance. So for the Montgomery Home Caps, it's top five, uh, through FCS. So that is amazing. Al Drew, the eventual national champion, uh, North Dakota State, by average attendance. So a little bit of that magic is starting to kind of sprinkle in. Then you look at our, our partners here to the north, and you think about now Alabama A&M was in the uh, top 15 as far as generating actual revenue um, for their home game attendance. So as far as what we collectively do uh, at the McDonald's Match City Class presented by Coca-Cola, you start to see – that feeling because again, you know, if men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Uh, you know, shout out to Jigger. Uh, <laughs> and looking at that and seeing that. So we see it happening there. Um, but you know, also we see some of the great things that Jackson State is doing with leading and overall attendance. We see, you know, our friends down at Florida A and M and um knowing that, you know, North Carolina A T is always one of those brands to watch. So uh, it's starting a little bit, Tyler, but I think to your point and probably your next step is I think everybody, we just need to get a little more intentional. Um, again, you know, with some of these great, amazing FBS games that we're glued to sofas and, and armchairs kind of watching on Saturday, let's get out and support some of these, some of these campuses that are a little closer to us, to have a little more connection ultimately to us culturally as far as being able to help move the needle. Uh, and let's kind of share the well. I guess that would be my my next step, Simeon, kind of call to order for everyone. Hey, hey Perry, you, you, you get a – man, you, you just said our mission statement right there. I didn't even have to prompt you to it, man. That That is what we, we aim for uh, every week. And Absolutely. Really, it just comes back to the kids, man. Like, you know, 
you know, talking to those kids, man, at the press conference last year, the energy on their face. The I mean, they Ooh. they took it in like when they saw, you know, all the cameras, all the people there. You know, you're, you, we were at the Coca-Cola plant and there's just product everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, man, they love that stuff and they, and they deserve it. They deserve it. No, Tyler, you you said all the keys there, my friend. And again, thank thank you guys for what you're doing. I mean, we can't we can't minimize what it is. You know, when we talk about the press conference being full. That that's an intentional move by every one of the attendees there, right? Uh, because again, you could have been several other places in the United States. You recognize what it is that these two deserve an HBCU that only event. I guess we should pause on that point also. Because I just don't think that that part is said enough and clear enough. Alabama A&M, Alabama State owned the McDonald's Night City Classic presented by Coca-Cola. We've been their partners of choice now for over 20 years. But this is black-owned <laughs> for folks that need to hear it that way. I'm kind of old school, so sometimes I don't say African-American. Sometimes I just say black. But this is, this is that minority-owned event. Uh, so every bit of this goes back to being able to help educate the minds of those that may have had a tougher passage into some of the other hallowed halls of education that may have seen this as the opportunity to be able to help mom and pops and auntie and big mom out a little bit more with a few more dollars because they're, 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 you know, the scholarship qualifications uh, probably were a little more in line with, with these two deserving HBCUs and some of their contemporaries across the aisle. Um, but then ultimately, you know, Tyler, you know these stats better than I do. You're talking up to 40 to 75 percent of of executives, professionals, uh, and all post secondary. All of those folks are coming down this aisle, so it still serves an extremely viable purpose. Uh, so it's not just entertaining, but what this does, it serves as a recruiting tool. It's just saying, look, if you want it all and you don't have to sacrifice any of what it is that you learned, and to be able to still be culturally significant, but executive worthy hbcus are still still need to be at the top of your wish list as a, as a senior uh, kind of matriculating through that year in and, high school and, and you guys brought in some some heavy hitters uh you had one of the the local big time mcdonald owner operators from uh birmingham was there he spoke uh man i i was oh yeah i was a yes sir yeah, take, taking notes on, on what he was saying you know business-wise so it's it's more than just uh, i mean the football was great the bands are great but i mean th this week uh of the uh magic city classic encompasses so much no and that's the point that's the point tyler is that we we, we value you guys coming in covering the event and help to tell our stories throughout the the corners of this this great uh, country of ours, but then also with our men uh, and women putting themselves in harm's way. We know that uh, a lot of our armed forces are watching uh, and kind of looking at that, and some have direct connections to either, you know, kind of participating in a GI Bill going through these two great universities and other HBCUs like this. So, yeah, um, we would be doing a disservice to everybody if we only tell a piece of the story and not put everything on the highlight and kind of showing what you can do, uh, being a part of this amazing event, being a part of uh, the illustrious alumni that are coming through there. Yeah, anytime you've got Larry Thornton, who is a multiple chairman of the board for, you know, from you think about from Coca-Cola to a multiple McDonald's franchise owner to being on the board of directors for many local banks and other large companies to being an author and an artist, I mean, this is the Renaissance man that people talk about. I mean, we've got a living legend in our midst, so we we humbly uh, shut up when Larry Thorne is speaking because there's something that you can always gain and you're smart aboard. And, and it means something when you can see it, like when you can see somebody who looks like you, who grew sure. up like you, have that type of success, reach out and touch it. Uh, that's a lot sure. more than just, you know, somebody saying, hey, hey, one day maybe, you know, you could be this. But when you can actually Correct. see it, that, that is really impactful. No, again, you, you you keep teeing it up, man. And I tell you, I'm gonna try to knock it completely out because uh, you, you keep teeing this up so well. It's a sure it is when you see you um, that reflection, that person that understands the same things that you do. And you know, Larry is one of the quickest wits. So somebody who is not quote unquote a stuffy individual, but 
understands exact same things. And again, we talked about those levels of success and being able to break it down to basically common folk language and what good looks like and how you should get there. And I'm right here if you have a question uh, and he really means that. So, you know, you're thinking about uh, Mayor Wilson, who, again, is under 40, national scene, anytime the Democratic National Conference wants to speak to mayors about what's next. He's on that short list. And, and, you know, and also a Morehouse man. So when you think about literally being able to touch through this event, what excellence looks like on a daily basis and kind of how do you get there? Yeah, you need to look no further than, you know, the top of the food chain here with the McDonald's Man City Classic presented by Coca-Cola. We're talking with Perrin King. He's the executive director uh, of the Magic City Classic, of the McDonald's Magic City Classic presented by Coca-Cola. I, I knew I could get that right at least one time. See, see there it is. It's infectious. <laughs> it is infectious, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what what uh me, me and you need to go on the nascar circuit man i, I think we got this sponsor thing rolling uh what, good, no doubt what what is one thing maybe that people uh you would want people to know um about this year's classic or information or just something that uh they can connect with to make sure uh, they got everything lined up before the event get, gets here Sure. No, I thank thank you for asking. Uh keynotes is that one again noted that October thirty first uh is going to be the classic. It's always last Saturday in October. It's always in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh and if you want to think about uh, you know, with the everybody everything's about millennials and everything kind of thinking through what that significance is and you know the place of baby boomers, which have been amazing to this event. Tina, since 2000, uh, we've almost had right at 1.3 billion people that have watched the game from inside Legion Field. Not just that, 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 that big, huge man number that's out there grilling and fellowshipping, but we've almost had 1.3 billion folks watching that game from inside the Legion Field. Um, and we welcome them to kind of take their part, everybody out there listening and watching, um, to be part of that, that, that growing contingency, congregation. Um, for this year. It's always outstanding entertainment. It's always an amazing time. Last year, despite having an amazing uh, almost weather delay, but we kind of avoided that uh, triple overtime thriller uh, won by the Bulldogs of Alabama A&M. You still had two chains come there and burn the stage down from the 50-yard line. Uh, you know, the year before that, you had Don Teal and Gucci, man. I'm sorry, Gua as the streets will call it. I mean, there's, there's always amazing uh, that is held. So we, we try to make sure that we are, are giving that value and um, for the event. And again, come on up Tuesday if you can gather your vacation days together because, uh, again, we love to have you starting as early as Tuesday uh, and then leave it out for brunch on Sunday. I can attest. It is a party on Tuesday if you have not experienced it. Oh, yeah. It. No, it's real thing. <laughs> Look, I, I, drove up from, I drew up from Atlanta one day uh, to go hang out with the fans, get some stories, and there was a pig on sure. the spit, man. I think that pig was oh, yeah. out in the field the same time that I left Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Because he, hey, was, he was, <laughs> I think his eyes were still looking at me, man. It was the craziest thing. I, his, his tongue still looked fresh, man. It was, <laughs> it was uh, hey. authentic. It was authentic, <laughs> to say the least. I tell you, two tailgate slots over, you probably saw somebody hand patty and crab cakes. Yeah. So, I mean, you talk about, my goodness, it's, this is the wildest thing that is the most beautiful thing that celebrates the, you know, the HBCU landscape and these two deserving HBCUs with Alabama and Alabama and State. And, you know, one of the things that I was telling uh, during one of the interviews last year on site, uh, full weather gear on, uh, somebody asked, hey, well, who do you think is going to win? I'm like, same winner for seven, eight years, which is the culture. <laughs> the culture is undefeated. So, again, long live the culture of uh, HBCUs and, uh, you know, everything that we do here at the McDonald's Man City Classic presented by Coca-Cola uh, to do our part in representing it. All right. He's Perrin King. He's the man in charge. Perrin, thanks a lot for hanging out with us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you, man, once, every, once the world returns to normal, hopefully sooner than later. And uh, we're back out there watching football. We'll look forward to, to seeing you guys again. Now, pray to you, your family, all the fine folks that that, that participate in the HBCU game day and are logging in, uh, praying that right now they are sheltering in place. 
Uh, and again, keep your faith in the right place. So uh, again, we we will come through this. This too shall pass, and we're looking forward to an amazing October thirty first in Birmingham, Alabama. Thanks so much, Tyler. Well said. You've been watching HBCU Conversations here on HBCU Game Day. <laughs>